<laughs> hey guys, it's Kim here and I am joined once again by Becky. Hello, Becky. Hello. Hello. And today we're doing exciting things. Let me bring up the thing. We're binding a spell book. Yay. We're going to bind a spell book. This is going to be a very technical one. I think the okay. most technical one we've had. So bear with me and ask any questions because this is going to be... Uh, <laughs> Gonna be a, an gonna interesting be a, it's one. It's a bit of an experiment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is, before we get started, yeah. you might want to twin this tutorial with a tutorial we did a couple of weeks ago. Links in the video description below, um, which was making an antique map or antique pages, uh, basically. So um, go check out that tutorial as well, um, because there you can learn how to make sort of antique pages to go with into your spell book and I, I guess you're going to be using those pages today to bind your book <laughs> so I realized uh, I actually have a spell book idea that I've had for a while and this suddenly like pinged back into my mind uh, in the middle of the gap between streams where I was like oh I meant to make this spell book for I meant to make a specific spell book I meant to make a weather spell book I've got this idea about oh. a um, interactive weather spell book where when you press things on the pages and when you speak uh, the spells then like sounds of weather will change around you um, so this has been in the progress for a while and I was like you know what if I'm binding a spell book I might as well prep for this spell book so I've abandoned my Bristol map I'm so oh, sorry wow okay um, um, and instead I've, d I've started I don't know if you can see this because this is just penciled out oh damn I've started this kind of celestial weather map instead. Wow, that looks amazing. Um, yeah, and I've started this. It's called Of Hail and Thunder right now. So I, I was looking this up. Oh, I've left my notes over there. Um, I might have to grab my phone and look it up. But uh, there was there were in the in the tenth in the tenth century mm -hmm. they thought there were weather mad uh, weather wizards that were messing with the weather in England. I mean, there are. Um, I, I can't remember what they were called. It's really bugging me. I'll look it up later. Wizards. Um, Wizards. Yeah. It's, uh, it's some wonderfully Latin word, of course. Um, tempestare. They were called the Tempestare. Ooh. And because um, they caused, caused tempests, of course. And a 10th uh, a century uh, British bishop wrote a treatise on the dangers of Tempestaria and what they were causing to, to England called cool. Of Hail and Thunder. Okay. So I put on my map Of Hail and Thunder because I just think that's, uh, yeah. That yeah, that's is so cool. wonderfully amazing. Right, so before we get started, I'm going to plaster this uh, materials list over my face. Uh, <laughs> so do you want to just quickly go through it? Okay, so I'll also... Uh, I'm just so going to hide back here and pick my nose. Hold on. Keep going. Take lovely. Away. So what you need for your um, spell book is all your pages folded in half um, and tea stained if you want. I've chosen to tea stain my end pages, but not my pages inside because I need them to be a bit more... Um, for the purposes of my spell book, I need to be able to mess with them later. So... These are my end pages. That's my front end page and my back end page. They are of slightly thicker paper just to give it a bit more structure. Um, all my pages inside, I didn't actually say this in the guide, but I have turned into signatures, which just means they are multiple folded pages. So I think all of mine have three pages and they're tucked inside one another. That is called a signature. Cool. Um, so I've got like five signatures of three pages each. Um, two end pages. Uh, the, the two thick piece of card were more of a kind of prep thing so I can explain stuff, but I have my, actually a three thick piece of card, don't know how that's happened. Two piece of card that are basically just a bit bigger than your paper, so will form the front and the back of your book. They are your boards. Um, one of the methods of binding I'm going to teach you today, you can actually bind into the boards, but I've never done it, so I don't feel comfortable kind of teaching it. <laughs> um, you need wax thread. I actually have some left over from previous book binding, um, but you can just use normal thread. Normal thread will work fine. Um, it can tangle and it can rip the paper and the waxing helps stop that. If you've got a candle, you can literally just run that along thread to get wax thread. Um, you need a needle. That's a tiny needle. That's a needle that shows up better on camera, but it's too big. Um, if you have one of these, 
this is a an upholstery needle um, which is curved these are really great for book binding you'll sort of see later why that's helpful um, what else have I said saw or poking stick um, <laughs> I've lost my all uh, nothing to lose we, yeah I'm very sad about this so I'm either going to use my saw or I'm going to stab stuff with my knife. Basically something for poking holes, but like the saw, you can, I'll show you how you can use the saw in a second. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I had a few questions on Twitter when I, um, sorry, I'm just going to peer over the top here. I had you a few questions on Twitter about that saw. And am I right in thinking that's a gentleman's saw? I've got no idea. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I call it my, I call it my bone saw. I'm pretty sure it's a gentleman's, it's called a gent's saw because it's the kind of saw that gentlemen would use as hobbyists to do delicate uh, dovetail joints and stuff. Um, what about all this stuff at the bottom? Optional crap, like uh, half a cardboard tube, the length of your paper, ribbon, and then for next time. What's, what's this for next time business down here? <laughs> okay, so the ribbon, I will ex I've got this ribbon, which is really nice and a bit storm colored, so that's... I'll explain the ribbon in a second because it relates to the two different binding styles we're going to look at. Um, the half a cardboard tube, you can do this a number of different ways, but if you really want that kind of classic spellbook look with the kind of, oh God, mm -hmm. dropping things, classic spellbook look with the curved edge, then you need a kind of curved edge. So these things are more, we'll talk about them at the end in regards to what we're going to do next week but we don't need them this okay. week. So is this um, going to be a two-part business? Well, today we're going to bind, and next week we'll, or next stream we'll um, decorate, because otherwise what you'll have at the end of today is a bunch of pages bound together and some pieces of cardboard. Okay. And <laughs> that's not really a... Uh, that's not really a... Fair well, enough. Because that's just some cardboard. Fair enough. I'll email Harry about <clears throat> getting a featured spot next week as well then. <laughs> Start. Let's talk about the two different... Here's two I prepared earlier. I am going to show you uh, both of these ways of stitching. But I just want to, um, you know, start with talking about this is not... This is... We're going to be learning Coptic binding today. What? Which is... <laughs> so in the second AD in Egypt, there were a bunch of Christians. They were called the Cop they used to bind papyrus into books and Coptic Cop. binding. C-O-P. C-O-P-T-I-C. Um, Coptic. Okay, I heard something um. very different. Ho, ho, ho. Carry on. <sighs> Coptic. Um, what did you... I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I heard cock. <laughs> of course you did. Um... So we're going to be looking at two methods of Coptic binding. Coptic binding is just basically like tying a thread around um, paper to make a book. Um, so what we think of as modern Coptic binding is generally kettle stitch. So we'll do kettle stitch first. I Kettle stitch can look very pretty on the outside. I'm going to try and show you that. It looks better with more pages, of course. Um, you get this really nice kind of link, rope link building up the side. I don't love it because you end up with these really solid lines of thread mm. inside your book when you, where you're binding, which you might like. I, it's not my favourite. I love French link stitch. <sighs> Have French you literally link... just like bound little leaflets with the, yes. the, the name on it? Yes. Oh God, you're such a nerd. I love it. I bound demonstration books. <laughs> That's also, adorable. because I did realise last night, I was like, I have done this myself, but I have never ever taught it to anyone else. Okay. So I was like, I really should like just go just, over this yeah, again in yeah. my head so I know what I'm talking about. Okay. French link stitch, I love. It creates this really nice cross pattern on the edge and you end up with a, a kettle stitch here at the corners binding it. And what you can do is you can feed a ribbon under these bits and it just it's really nice and decorative and I love it. Um, and inside you get this effect, you get like an alternate stitch look, which I think looks nicer. It's yeah. subtler. Um, we're not doing like proper book binding. You go on courses for that shit. Like I am not going to teach you how to properly bind a book because I don't know how. But that's <laughs> what we're here for. You are our course. <laughs> 
I'm going to teach you how to Coptic bookbind, which is a form of bookbinding. I'm not going to teach you how to bind books that would like be sold on shelves. If you want to do that, Nerdforge on YouTube, she bookbinds incredibly, but that involves things like book presses yeah. and like she binds them onto the back of chairs because they have to have a certain amount of tension and things. Oh. Oh. Like, so we're not learning that today. We're going to be learning Coptic kettle stitch and French link stitch. Okay, cool. So we're going to start with kettle stitch because I'm going to bind my book in French link stitch. So I'll show you uh, kettle stitch first. So here's one I prepared earlier of my folded sheets of paper. Um, this is something I learned from Nerdforge is the saw trick. So first of all, if you're going to use a saw, you ideally want to clamp your pages. I don't own big clamps. I realise this is an error this morning and I might have to punch <laughs> holes in the big pages because I don't own big clamps. What I earn are bulldog clips. So we can bulldog clip them. Um, you want to line up the spines of your pages. So you essentially want to kind of tap that side and it will end up a bit, you know, a bit rough this side, but that's the side that needs to line up. So. I um I discovered that I had no clamps the other day when I was trying to make that planter, and I got <laughs> to a certain corner and I was like, "It'd be really nice if I had some clamps right now." You and I need to invest in clamps. Oh, Kim, if you see my new tools, uh -huh. I'll put them on Instagram. I'll show you later. <laughs> new tools. Um, so an important thing about both these types of stitches, you need an an even number of holes. So that you end up with an odd number of um like bases between the holes this is to do with like where the thread ends up so and this one i've got six holes so there are five gaps yep so there is a bit of measuring involved what i'm out <laughs> um so i would usually start about a centimeter in from the edge for your first holes because you want to be quite near the edge so that the book is nice and tight, but you don't want to be falling off the edge. Yeah. Told you this was a technical one. <laughs> I warned you! <laughs> um, so I'm just going to put a little mark at one and a little mark one in the other. And then I have got, that is 12 and a half centimetres between those two points. That's a, I'm going to get out my phone and use the calculator yeah. because I'm not doing that math. Also had a question earlier from Carl the Drummer. Becky, any ideas on how to flatten paper? I am using wallpaper lining paper for the pages of my book and I cannot get them to lie flat. I cut them out last night and have had weighted, uh, have them weighted under something heavy since, but it hasn't done nothing. Um, bit of, uh, if you gently wet them and then press them, that will help. So my way of doing it, and iron them. If you've got an iron, you can iron paper. Mm -hmm. And if you iron paper with a slight, you know when you've got that slight the steam, steam, set, steam yeah, setting where yeah. you don't have to push the button, but it's like gently pushing some out as you, as you iron. If you iron like that, and then you put it under a book, that will stay like that. You know when your brain is like, don't know if this maths is correct. You're asking <laughs> the worst person in the world for that like literally literally one of the things that clued my teachers in to that i was dyslexic was decimal points um no. like there was a math class it was a disaster i couldn't i couldn't place decimal points for love nor money um and then they went this girl needs testing for dyslexia <laughs> <laughs> or she's an idiot one or the other <laughs> Carry on. so what have you done what have you just done you've just measured up some crap so i've just measured up some crap so i've done one centimeter in each end the distance between was 12.5 divided that by five to get my five gaps so that I've got six six different things when we're on to bigger paper we might divide more than six but right now uh six is enough for a paper of this size um so <clears throat> I was trying to do this yesterday and I kept like messing it up and cutting my paper everywhere I'm not that good with swords and cutting <laughs> I think I've spoken about my inability to cut before um so I've just kind of marked on the front where I need to do my uh, do my holes, and I can just very carefully um, just go down enough, making sure that you've gone through all the pages. So, because some of these are signatures that have more pages in them, so I need to make sure I've gone through all the pages. 
I am listening, by the way. It's just Milo has decided to be adorable and is giving me tiny little meows, and he's rolled over onto Aww. his back, so he's like wanting belly rubs, and I just can't. I when? did a little kitty. Who wants a belly rub? Who wants a belly rub? <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Keep going. You know how lockdown's affecting us all in different ways? Yeah. I think uh, Kim might need to get away from her cat for a little no. bit. No. <laughs> you are so my cool. sunshine. My only sunshine. You ma you've got a weird thing in your paw. What is in your paw, little man? <laughs> Who have you been maiming? Anyway. Who have you got, who have you got in your paw? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. So we've got a person in chat, uh, Roll Def, who has a maths degree. Well done. Oh um, my goodness, that is impressive. I noped out way before that. But now that they've now that they've uh, announced that, there's people being like, "Tell me this math thing, math <laughs> wizard. You are the math man. Tell me all the math." Um, yeah, <laughs> I I used to I really loved maths when I was a kid, and I wish I still loved it. But like, I did A level maths. And that ruined it for me. I it's honestly think A levels logic. just like ruin everything. To be honest, they're designed to destroy your love of everything. Yeah. So here we go. That we've just cut across the um, edges here, and this. If we look in our first uh, front page, you'll see there's uh, lovely little holes there, ready to be sewn. Nice. You see those lovely little holes. That so you, you only make a kind of a shallow cut. Yes, you only make a sh so you're literally that is just a really quick way of making holes in all your pages in the right um right in the same spot. So getting your measurements really quickly because if you're poking holes in your pages, you of course have to do each signature one by one and then kind of measure them each time and hope that your measuring is good enough they all line up. This way they're definitely all lined up. So it's a really you know, you're essentially using a saw to make a hole. Okay. But because so it's really shallow, and it's just about making that that hole, and it's just a beautiful way of lining them up. Like when I saw Nerdforge doing that, I was like, ah, oh. yeah, so excited. Cool. <laughs> I, I'll find a way to do it on my bigger pages because I can't actually bear the idea of stabbing them all. Um. So first of all, you two tweeted us this amazing dragon. Look at it. Uh, hold on. Yeah. There we go. Let's make it bigger. Look at this dragon. The scale, scales on that are things of beauty. I mean, that is beautiful scale work. And the colours are really nice. Mm. Um, and then Tutu... I'm probably butchering your username, Tutu. Sorry. And they also made this amazing miniature scene. Can we talk about this for a second? I... Like, I have you made this all from scratch? Is it a kit? Like... Yeah, I love it. It looks crazy. That's I love incredible. it. Incredible. Love it. And I love your dragon as well. The scales. Becky, they look like your scales and little antlers. They look, look better than my scales. Look, like, look what you've done. Like... Look what you've helped people to create, Rebecca. Look. I'm so proud of you people. Thank you. So there we go. I would like to state for the record that I hate threading needles. Oh, yeah. Do you not have one of those little things? like the? No, I thing... don't have one of those little things. Do, do all the sewers in the group, do you know Do you know what I'm talking about? Like that little metal thing that has the little wires and you put it in the eye and then put the thread and then pull it out and it pulls the My eye. My grandma A threader. Had. A kick-in. A, a threader. So you've, got your pieces of, you've got your piece of paper. You want to start at your back, your back page. Um because especially on Coptic Kettle Stitch, you end up with this line of thread on the bottom and you really want that to be the back because it's the less pretty bit. So, start with our end pages. My end pages, for the way I'm doing this, my end pages are single pages and it's because we are going to stick them into our book. Kim's just gone. No, I'm not gone. I just turned off my camera while I'm just trying to figure out. So don't worry, okay. it's fine. I turned it off because you didn't want to see my crotch. So we're, we're, you know, here we start, we are now about to start, actually start doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't need to open up your pages, but for purpose of demonstration, I will. Um, but you're going to start at an end from the outside of your page. So you're going to go through with your thread. It's a really big, this is a really thick thread. It's going to make all my holes so giant. But as <laughs> this is just a, an experiment, this is just a demonstration. It's fine. Yeah. 
Uh, um, so. I am still here, by the way. I'm just trying not to be distracting while Becky actually <laughs> does the teaching bit. Like, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out this. So. Also, one thing to consider, uh, consider with your uh, threads and your choosing your stitch, kettle stitch uh, involves a lot more thread than French link stitch does because it goes all the way down the page. So you're basically going like back in and back out. You need a lot of thread for this. You need like the length of your book times however many signatures you've got plus a bit extra for, you know, panic. Why is it wax thread? Wax thread stops it tangling mm -hmm. and also stops it like ripping through the paper so badly. Okay. So you know like how thread is really thick. You know like when you go to a cheese cheese counter and they cut the cheese with that uh, wire? Yeah. A thread, like thin unwaxed thread basically acts like that where it's like a cutting tool. So as soon as it's taut against paper, it will, it has a danger of just slicing through it. Wax thread just gives it that bit of friction that stops it sliding through and cutting the paper. Cool. Did you get all that, Kim? Or were you <laughs> playing with my hair? Something about cheese and <laughs> wax thread. Oh, our mods okay. turned up. Hi, Nightjar. Don't worry about it. I'm a cat now. Look, I'm a cat. I'm a, this is um, me. So you can, if you're concerned about your, you know, you pulling your thread, you can tie a knot in this end. But if you just want to leave an end, then we will come back to that and tie it in a snazzy way later. I'll teach you a knot. Oh, I'm so, excited. Uh, <laughs> I can't actually see my holes. They're that small that I have uh, can't see them. So start off for kettle stitch is you're just going to go. There is a lot of thread here. I don't know if I need this much thread or if I want this much thread. <sighs> uh, Aeon so, U in chat says, which stitch type is more robust? Ooh. It really depends. Like, I'm going to be saying that a lot today. It really depends. Um, the kettle stitch is probably more robust in terms of binding. But the French stitch um, keeps, I would say, the pages closer together and um, can be more robust when you're uh, fix affixing it into a cover. So, swings and roundabouts, really. Hmm. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Is it about cats? Something about cats. Cats are awesome. He um, is shedding like a mother trucker today. Ugh. I mean, it's really hot. Like, if you were wearing black fur right now, wouldn't you want to shed it? You see me in my goth ears. <laughs> I've seen pictures of Kim when she was young. <laughs> so this lot. Didn't mean so that this sound, lot. sound quite so creepy. Yeah, that uh, was a bit... <laughs> I've seen you when you were young. I've seen you young. <laughs> it's like my uh, serial killer. Um, so what you can do, like you're just weaving in and out here. Um, what you can do with your, uh, if you've got a curve needer, is you can actually sometimes go through two at once and not have to do it all in single bits. Ah. Um, so, yeah. So Got a question go. from Tim Plum something. Uh, does the wax leak or chip on the paper, uh, pages over time or wear off? Um, it will wear a bit, but the, like, the main point that you're putting pressure on the thread and the pages is during the binder. So, uh, during the binding even um so actually after that once it's kind of in place it's not going to be like pulling back and forth so much so it's not such an issue so if the wax does wear off like you don't need to re, re wax the thread that was a very hard sentence to say hmm. so this is your first line of threading now you're going to go back the opposite way so you're basically going to go back and you're going to go in in places you came out so that you end up with a line all the way along the outside and a line all the way along the inside if any of this is not making sense tell me yeah please do right so we've reached the top of our first signature <laughs> um and we've got this end thread and we've got another thread right does anyone know how to do a reef knot? 
Um, I should do because my dad loves sailing and he taught me many times, but I don't <laughs> listen. So reef knots are really important in puppetry. Uh, so these are my puppetry notes from when I Ooh. learned uh, to carve a puppet. There's uh, lots of, you know, lots of like how to, I'm really a writing person rather than a drawing person. So I did lots and lots of notes. And I actually had to draw this little diagram of like left one, right one, left one, or like what you did with each of the different threads in order to make it make sense to my head. Um, if you don't know how to do a reef knot, just go and YouTube it because it makes so much more sense if you see someone doing it like properly than if I try and explain it. But a reef knot is a really good like uh, way to tie off your thread at this point. Vinny, um, Vinny and... says, left over right and under, right over left and under. That's basically it, but I couldn't get my head into that at all. Mm -hmm. Like, that didn't make sense to me, um, and I don't know why. And it's slightly hard as well when you're, uh, you've got this much thread and you're yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. do it. Um, so it's like right over, I'm going left over, but that's fine. So you go, I'm going under. <laughs> you basically go, you go round and through and like round and through. She says with a huge yeah. ball of twine <laughs> that didn't make sense to anyone. So you're trying to tie a knot at the top here. So at this, the top of this hole. I'm not even, no, that's, I failed to do a reef knot there. <laughs> what I've just done there is something else. In this is what I mean, like reef knots. I'm like, I've, I've learned this and I still, my brain is still like, nope. <laughs> nope, not, not doing this. Um, So I think what's actually... What is going on here? Why is why is my brain not not handling this? Because it's a Wednesday morning. I feel like I need to. I feel like I need to thread this through another way. Um, I'm I'm lying. You can't do a reef knot on this one. You need to. Do, you can do a reef knot on um. On French link stitch, but I don't think you can make it work on Coptic kettle stitch because you need to go like back through. So, ignore what I've sort of done here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I've sort of done, but tie a knot in this loose thread, okay? Tie a knot. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a, 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 a just tie a, a knot. Reef just knot. a normal knot. Just, just a tie a normal damn. knot there. Again, like Coptic, Coptic binding is just binding like things together, like knotting threads with paper. Um, so everyone who teaches you this will have their slight variation on how you do it. Um, so, with kettle stitch, you want to go back through that last signature, okay? So you've done all the way in, all the way out, you go back through and you tie a knot through this thread at the top. This is what I wasn't, my brain was like, I can't do this. <sighs> oh god. So much thread! <laughs> I've so you're tying a knot on the inside of your page so the the spine is outside you're tying a knot on the inside into that thread and then you're going back out through the hole so you've tied that knot so that when you go back out through the hole you're not pulling out all your stitches again does that make sense to everyone yes say if kim's just saying yes i'm just trying to annoy the cat it's fine busy um because i've been trying to show this off i haven't been tightening it as well as i should um so just this should be tight not loose like this <laughs> just you know don't don't do as i say not as i do so this is your first signature this is your first this is your back page now you need to add your first signature so your, your signature again is you know a few pages put together um, if I'm lucky with the saw, yeah, that's created holes all the way through. So, take your first signature, line it up on top of your end page. Eh. Why was that so hard? You'll want to basically have a thumb in the middle of this so that you can easily kind of get the, get the needle through. Poke the needle through the first hole and pull your thread through. <laughs> that's not gone through all the holes, that's only gone through two holes. <laughs> There we go. Like, this is why you have your, your finger in the middle so you can tell where whether you've gone through all the pages or whether you've just gone through like two and come out somewhere not in the middle of the signature. See? Technical stuff. 
Well, um, probably a dumb question, but how? I get well. I can see actually you're pushing quite hard there. How delicate do you need to be? Because I'm guessing the paper that you're using to make these is thicker, right? This is normal printer paper. So, just you know, the paper that I'm using later is much thicker. It's my uh, caddy, caddy, however we're Kai, saying that yeah. paper. Hardy. Um, this is just print a standard printer paper. I would say, like, wax cotton does, does negate a little bit of the uh, needing to be delicate. And you do need to pull it taut, but not so, like, tight that it um, rips the pages. So it's you'll feel it. You'll feel when the paper, like, starts to want to give, you know, you don't pull it that hard. <laughs> uh, so you've gone in through the first signature, go through the second hole in that signature. Yeah. This is also, as I've said, quite a thick thread, so I'm having to really push it through the holes. Whereas, like, later on I'll use my thinner wax thread, um, and that will go through a lot easier. So, this is the first bit of doing your kettle stitch. And this is where a, a curvy needle really comes in handy. So, you want to go, this loop that's on your back page, you want to go through that, and then back under the other one, and come out the other side. So you're looping round the threads from the signature below. Could you um, hold it up just slightly higher on your board? Like just yeah, move mid-board. I'm mid -board. get my pencil out of the way, which keeps uh, there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you've looped, you've come out this hole, you've looped under the thread from below, under the next thread, and round. Yeah? And then yeah. you go back through the hole. Okay. And you basically repeat that all, all the way, way down, down the signature. spine. Okay. Um, it gets slightly different when you put the next signature on. This is attaching to the bottom signature uh, or the end page. Oh, God. Um, Carl the drummer um, says, does the thread need to be cotton or would nylon serving thread used for archery, bu archery bow str strings be okay? It's a bit thicker, but it doesn't tangle. It doesn't tangle. Nylon thread does, uh, does cut beautifully, though. Like, it cuts, it slices very nicely. Um, so the advantage of cotton thread is, you know, you can wax it, it's just a bit softer. It, it's not going to create that kind of wire-like slice through. Um, yeah, nylon thread would probably cut through the paper when you start pulling it tight. I've got so many things on my cutting board that literally, because I've got so much thread, it's just picking them yeah, all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got <laughs> pencil and other things. I'm just collecting stuff in my, uh, in my thread. So yeah, same thing all the way around. Like, this is the curved needle being able to loop round like this. Whereas when you get a lot of signatures on top of each other, um, doing it with a straight needle, you'll often, like, stab through and it'll get stuck behind things. Like, it, it really, like, I started binding with a straight needle and then I got this needle and I was like, ha, ah, this makes everything so much easier. I don't know why I didn't do this before. Um, like, I got this in a set of needles at Asda for a quid. So they're huh. not expensive. Yeah. Um, thing is, those curved needles just remind me of um, probably from my upbringing, my mum being a midwife. But it reminds me of like surgical needles that you do that you of, stitch yeah. people up with. That's what that reminds me. Oh, what I've done here is actually uh, gone through the thread with my needle, which is not what I'm doing. There we go. So yeah, just every time you're looping through, you just kind of <sighs> this gets better as it goes along because of course the thread gets shorter. Just pulling it tight so it's that you shouldn't end up with a loose bit like that on the inside so you just want to you know camera. pull it through when you flipped it it just went off camera okay can you show us the other yeah. side yeah so you don't want these bits to be loose so make sure you you don't want these bits to be loose so make sure you pull the thread all the way through and pull it tight that's that's on camera now yeah perfect but yeah okay so yeah we just you keep doing that all the way all the way through this, this signature. Any questions while while I'm just sewing um, this one? Akikins has a little uh, pro tip. Pulling thread tight in book binding, pull it in the direction of sewing so it's parallel. Don't pull up. That can make the thread cut through the paper. Small tip. I don't know if I explained it well enough in the text. Oh, yeah. yeah, very good. Like, pull that way, don't pull that way. Yeah. Um, also, if you the... have got a... Um, straight needle 
one of the ways to do it, like, and you're really struggling and you keep stabbing the paper, one of the ways to do it is to put it in base first. So thread it under that way, and that way you won't stab the paper and create holes and scuffs in it. Okay, just, we're all, we've reached the end of the first signature. So now that we've reached the end of the first signature, in order to get to the second signature, we need to loop under this thread and then we go into the first, and then we go into the first hole on the next signature. So we're looping around this end, um, creating that kind of kettle bind. This kettle stitch, like the kettle is literally a description of this loop round kind of system. So that's all that that's really describing is that kind of whoop. Okay, and then we take our next signature and we open it up and put our fingers in the middle. And we go into the first hole there. And then repeat. Akikins uh, says there's a vague way of measuring out how to measure how much thread to cut. You measure the length, like from head to tail along the spine, times how many signatures, the folded parts, plus half a spine length. And then you don't have a giant have to have a giant bundle of thread, but also if you need to add thread in, try to end at the top or bottom where you do kettle stitches. That is a very good, like you can tie on there quite nicely, whereas if you're tying on really scrappy and it then, then stuff out right we're into the first like joining a signature to a signature this is really where this comes into its own okay this these are quite small together these are quite small signatures so what you're trying to do now when you've come out that second signature i'm trying to get this so you can actually see it in the light um is that okay everyone so you're going between the first front page and the signature so you're basically going under that kettle stitch create this new kettle stitch yeah so you go under the first signature but bef like between the first signature and the um, back page you loop under there so you're creating another kettle and then you go back through make sense yeah I don't know how many of these you want me to do or whether we should go you understand uh, cocked kettle stitch now and we'll abandon that because you just keep doing that yeah. basically. Chat, do you have any more questions on kettle stitching and what you've just seen? Are you happy for us to move? Well, I say us. I mean, are you happy for Becky to move on to the next bit? So I, I just wanted to show everyone this is um, the sketchbook that I just showed off my uh, puppetry notes in. This, this is a hand bound notebook. Um, so this is one of the first that I did when I decided I wanted to start hand binding my stuff and I really like binding my own sketchbooks and just sort of making them making them personal and the, this is why people love Coptic Stitch because it lays flat like your book will properly open up so for sketching mm. it's great yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's you know, none of this bending pages it's a flat book and it's wonderful um, so that's yeah this is essentially what we're making but we're making it bigger and more special um, Becky, can you add more pages after it's bound, or is that not possible? Not, uh, not by binding. So once, I mean, it's like a book that you buy off the shelf. Like binding is how you make all books. You can't add pages to that book. Um, Sorry. <laughs> there is a bit of flexibility in the. Um, what you could do is you could glue extra pages like and you'd lose like the edges but you could glue more pages in or you could bind a second section and then like stick it to the back and add that in um but yeah i just like you know books need to be resigned like you need to get new book so once you've finished a book find a new book <laughs> i've just had a ridiculous idea so th this is a clamp what's this is a thing that clamps my uh, my angle poise lamp to the table, and oh. I'm wondering if I could use this. To I think that could work. Pages. That could work. We have, this is lockdown crafts. Yeah. Lockdown crafts for the win. Adapt, overcome. So let's go. We're going one and thirty. Is that going to be okay? So some of these pages, because the pages are all handmade, there are variations in size. So if you can see from the side, um, like that one's really short and that one's really short. Um, so I'm just going to try and push those two so they're like in the middle and not like, you know, off to 
one side. But now I've actually clamped this too hard. I've, this this makeshift up. clamp. Sorry. God damn you, people. There you go. Just let me do crafts. <laughs> yes, but just make sure your camera's goddamn there. Is that better? Mm, sort of. It's just a... This makeshift clamp is doing great, by the way. Just, uh, <laughs> who knew? If you need some, but I've yeah. got some tiny ones uh, picked up from B&Q. Uh, like, really, really small ones. That's no good to me now, is it? Well, I didn't know you needed clamps, <laughs> did I? Uh, neither did I till I realised last night. Clips. Um, anyway. <laughs> but I might just take... So on this one, because it's bigger, I might just go in two centimetres because the one centimetre is going to be a bit... I'm going to put this into the middle so people can actually see what I'm talking about. Good girl. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was doing one centimetre in before, or 1.5, maybe 1.5, but one centimetre is a bit on the edge of those shorter pages. So I think I'm just going to go in uh, 1.5 each edge and then I'll have to do some fun maths. So, if you're going to put nice ribbon in your binding, in your French stitch, French link stitch, then um, you need to make sure that your stitches or your gaps are wide enough to fit the ribbon. Just, uh, yeah, basic, one of those basic things. So I have a gap that is 27 and I want seven. Oh, that's so close to being sort of a nice amount. Um, divided by seven it's like 3.85 that's a really annoying like why couldn't i just make it 28 and, and and it would divide perfectly by seven but yeah you do actually need to do this kind of proper maths not not just winging it um so i'm going to go 3.8 and then i can just go like times two times three to create like work out what the next ones are on my on my thing 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 ruler. Rude. Right, let's cut some holes, people. So I've got all my little, all my little markers here. So I've got seven. Uh, so I've got eight, eight, eight holes on this one, so that I can do. Um, I'll end up with three, three, uh, three French link stitches. Oh, oh dear. Words, words are really hard today. No, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that too. Also, I'm gonna turn my camera off. I'm sorry. Say goodbye to Milo, but Bye, I can't. Milo. I can't do this anymore. This is this is a joke. This yeah. stream's turning into a joke. I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, my hand That's hurts. Not the stream always a joke. Is the stream not. A joke? Oh God! Hold on. I'm just standing up. My knees hurt. Crack. So I'm going quite deep into this cut because um, I've got signature. These, these are. This is thick paper, and I've got some quite. Uh, thick signatures going on here so I've got to go down through like three sheets of paper so I'm just making sure I'm just going down a bit further than I was before just to make sure I'm going through all the pages but this is so much easier to cut and not slip than the uh, printer paper also don't put your thumbs underneath your knife as I am doing here and luckily that was off camera you didn't yeah I was about to say terrible health and safety everyone's complaining because i'm back look at how red my actually it's not that bad my chin and my nose have gone a bit round from milo floof milo floof <sighs> no just says, oh, yeah. i didn't come here to look at kim Ugh. Ugh, i know right <laughs> if you don't have a hand saw but your mum or dad has an actual saw can I use an actual saw? <laughs> sure. Or yeah, like stabby thing. You, I'll show you that in a minute when I'm not trying to hold things in the same place. Uh, but yeah, any ooh, slipped. Don't slip. Any saw will work for this. Like I just happen to have a small little saw that seems perfect for this job. If you've got a really sharp knife, you could probably do this with a knife as well. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. So we're binding a spell book. Um, we're really talking all about binding today. We're not getting on to making it a spell book. So these are my pages. I've just cut holes in them to start binding my proper book. And uh, after doing a demonstration earlier, and we're looking at two two different types of binding today. We're looking at the kettle stitch and the French French link stitch, which I really have trouble saying. 
Um, we did a, a, a kettle stitch experiment this morning, just showing off how that's how that's made. I've wrapped the thread around that, which has made it impossible to see, but we've looked at that. Um, so VOD squad, if you need to check that out and haven't seen it already. Um, and now we're going to do a French link stitch, which looks like this on the big book. Uh, cut my holes using a knife, but you can cut poke them with a hole. Pieces. This is my last resort. If you haven't got a knife and you can't cut along the edges, what you need to do is, is measure every signature and use a poking, use an awl or poking stick to poke these holes rather than slicing them through with a knife. So that's where we are. I've got my lovely upholstery needle, which is curved, which makes binding, Coptic binding really easy. Um, and this time I've got this thin wax black thread. Um, which I hope, I have roughly measured this, and I hope is going to be enough to do this whole book. It's going to be a bit of a kind of halfway through, I'll suddenly go, oh, it wasn't enough. Crap. <laughs> um, shit. Uh, yes, so I'm going to start with my back page, which, is that, it doesn't matter if it's upside down because you turn it around afterwards. Like, this is not, I'm like, why is it upside down? <laughs> it's like, that's not a thing yet. We haven't made the book. How could it be upside down? Um, okay. Now this time we do leave a thread hanging. This is, I need, I just need my little reference. Uh, so yeah, this time we do leave a thread hanging at the end. So I'm, I'm not making that up now. Um, I'm gonna try and, I'm just gonna push these out of the way and I'm gonna try and actually do this all on camera. <laughs> so always start from the outside and uh, stitch inwards. So you wanna pull most of your thread all the way through. Leave a little thread hanging for your reef knot. We talked about this earlier. This one actually does involve a reef knot, promise. Uh, reef knots. Um, so this one, you're going to go, you know, same system, in, out, in, out. So come out there. Just make sure, like, I'm going to try and do this properly because this is my real book. Uh, you want to do this tight. Make sure you hold on to your end thread while you're tightening. <laughs> otherwise, you'll just pull it through. Yeah. Um, then you'll have to start again. <laughs> well, uh, little tip there, bookbinding mistake we've all made. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's going to look... You know, sometimes when you're making something and just in your head, you finally get to that point when you're like, this is going to look really cool. <laughs> Because I'm very I mean, excited. Like I love the illustration you've drawn on the inside. <sighs> so excited about that. I think people uh, like people have been posting. There's been a lot of uh, you know struggles of isolation and creating during isolation, and people have been posting like memes and like the stages of creation. It's like oh, I've got a good idea. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Oh, this might not actually be bad. <laughs> Like those are the steps of creating anything. Your brain just yeah. goes, oh, it's terrible. I hate it. And then you yeah. suddenly go, oh, oh maybe I don't. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be all right. That really worked. Dumb question. Is this the middle yeah. of your book? This is the end of my book. End so you start book. at the end pages okay. and work across. So this is, this is like one end page. I've got thicker pages than my end pages. Mm -hmm. So these are my end pages, the single pages. Mm -hmm. And then my signatures are like three or four pages each. So you start at the end page and then you go in, you work across. Mm. Makes sense? Cool. So first signature, uh, put your finger in the middle as check that your holes have gone all the way through. My holes have not gone all the way through. So mm. I'm just going to take my stabbing needle and using the cuts on the outside as a guide, I'm just going to stab through great thing about having a big thick needle as well is just being able to do this yeah um also if you're a person who owns craft foam uh putting craft foam under your paper will keep it flat but allow you something to stab into yeah um because if you're just kind of doing it in the if you're doing it onto a onto a craft board like this there's not really enough to go through and if you're kind of holding it in the air the paper will bend and it hmm. uh <laughs> my foam is flying around um tim plumstein says uh so start to finish how long without distractions would a small book take uh depends how <laughs> depends on the person i guess depends um, on the skill level really 
Yeah, I mean, like, that one probably took me an hour or an hour and a half to make. So, yes, uh, the idea of this is it will genuinely be a spell book uh, that will make stuff happen. Um, so, yeah, voice activation, touch activation. I can't get through the hole. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Don't. <sighs> okay. So joining your first signature, your front page, your end page to your first signature, just go through the first hole. This is this bit is very simple. This is always the one where it joins to the end page is always the weakest joint, like this one. Uh, once you get past that, then you start cock ticking, then you start kettle stitching into that one. But this is always the the trickiest one. Uh, is that hole? Hold a bit. Yeah. Camera. Camera, ra, ra. But I need to do this in view. Yes. Can't see the hole. We need to see everything. Aha. Okay, so French link stitch time. So now we just link through there. Literally, that is it. Join these pages. Just loop around that thread, and then when you start pulling it tight, it will go into this lovely diagonal pattern. Hey. Um, see what I've just done there? So, haha, <laughs> this is how to make a mistake. So, that's tiny, but that's a scuff in the paper that I've just created by stabbing the, the needle through it. That's bad. That is why a lot of people who do bookbinding will go through with the back of their needle in order to not stab the paper, accidentally stab the paper. Okay. Right. Right. Yes, all the things. No, I'm just getting my brain around it a little bit. Um, it I was is... So... You carry on. I was just going to say, this is one of those things that you look at it and you're like, that's so complicated. Once you get the hang of it, yeah. it's so, like, your yeah. brain just goes, oh, that's really Click. easy. Yeah. Like, I thought Coptic binding was so complicated for years, and then I started doing it, I was like, oh. So, you can see this lovely, like, link stitch going along here. Nice little cross, cross bars. And um, this is where you're going to tie your reef knot. Okay. Like, so much more sense now. Right. I've got the two ends, I'm like, oh yeah, now, now I know. Yeah. Um, now I've got to actually, uh, so you go over and under and through and over and under and through. Okay. Over and under. Legit reefs. <laughs> Probably going to lose my needle doing this, but I can re-thread it. Fine. Which, which, which one am I pulling? Ah! <sighs> and even when you get to the legit reef knot... <laughs> Your brain can't do it. I like reef knots. I don't know why Like my brain can't reef knots, but it really was so hard for me. Yeah, to, really. Uh, they're like the most basic of knots. They really like, are, they really but are. I just could not, like, I was like, oh, I don't know what this is. Brilliant. There we go. There we go. Reef knot. Beautiful tie. Ah, lovely. Um, So I can now cut off this end from the dangly bit. Don't cut off your actual thread. That would be a mistake. Or your dangly bits. Or your dangly bits. Just your dangling threads. Um. That's lovely. Oh, that lovely. If you want to really secure a knot, put a little dab of glue on top of it, uh, but make sure it's just on the knot and not on the string. And then we're going to go into our second signature and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So Kim can now talk about her Patreon while I sew a second signature. Brilliant. Um, I do like this observation by Treya that over and under and through sounds like my last date with a guy. <laughs> over and under and through. Well, you know, that's how you remember a reef knot. So, yeah, um, once you've done your, you know, this is your second signature, you're going to do, you know, your Coptic kettle stitch onto the end to just join in. So you're going to loop behind that thread, doing our chain stitch, as we now know it is, and then come out, and then you're going to go into the next signature. Really quite simple. It's really fun that, like, books start really building up quite quickly this way. Um, which I really like. Like, there's um, 
Yeah, it seems very you know, satisfying, doesn't it? Like, you know... It's quite meditative, yeah. in a way. Like, I quite... You can really kind of get into this, uh, just sort of mentally. Um, yeah. And I think, like... I don't know, the, the French link stitch to me just seems a bit more... Mindless is not the right word, but... <laughs> I know what you mean, though. That kind of right level of mindlessness of, like, I'm competent enough to do this while engaging half my brain. Like, yeah. Like me in video editing. Right, what are you doing, Becky, for, right, for the cult of Hornsby? To... Right, we're, we're book binding today. We are learning how to bind a book together and we're going to turn it into a spell book. So we're making a magic book, um, but we've been learning book binding. So we're doing a French lit. Oh, I cannot a say French this. French lit. French link ditch. Ditch, bitch, stitch, what? We're doing a thing. We've just finished binding the book. We're going to tie it off, and then we're going to into make pretty. Show uh, everyone, um, show everyone the the cool illustration in the middle. Can you do that, or is it going to fall apart? We can do that. Look at that! It is cool. Becky drew that with her hands. Yeah, so, uh, done a thing to make it pretty because this is going to be a weather spell book. So I've done a kind of a celestial weather map. So yeah. This is what we're doing. We're in, we're in, this is craft stream over here. Yeah. So, tying off the end. You, you, you make a knot. <laughs> you make a knot, of a you, knot? Make a, you can make a blemming normal knot. Just a regular like, knot. It doesn't have to be a reef knot. Knot. That, not, that a knot, not that any other knots are not normal. We're not, you know, knocking any knots. Um, but yeah, you can literally just, like, you go to do your, like, kettle stitch around your this is the point 130 is about the point where kim and i start to lose it my stomach is growling like fierce because we get so hungry and so we just like the focus at this point just goes <sighs> i need food um so yeah just, just tie a knot tie a knot round oh that God, go to do your last kettle stitch and then tie a knot after you've done that kettle stitch just like yeah you can literally just tie a knot i might loop that round again do a sort of double just to make sure it's nice and secure. Don't know why I did that in a very East End gangster voice. Secure, you slag. Secure your knots, you slag. Secure your books. God damn it. Um. Okay. Right, I'm just going to take a needle and I'm going to run it underneath the thread so that I've got a bit of space. And then I'm going to... You can like sew this in as you're going, but I find it makes it hard to see what's what's happening. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wrap this around the needle and poke it through that way. Um, so you can like put your ribbon under as you're stitching, but I just find that very confusing. Like in terms of still being able to see what's going on. Uh, under. So we're just trying to get this ribbon under all of the stitches that we've created here. And I've poked a hole in my ribbon. It's going really well. Is what <laughs> this is really old ribbon. Like I was just literally like, oh, I've got this. I use this. Um, not going that well. But yeah, you can just sort of lift your threads up a bit. <sighs> <laughs> You're right there. Breathe. Oh god, I've just nerfed not... the music by accident. I'm not stressed at my uh, stressed at my book binding. That would be that would be a ridiculous thing to be. Right. I'm gonna put that ribbon under. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put something bigger under. I'm gonna put brush under. God, I don't want pizza Help. now. But pizza makes me so goddamn sick. Is this your poking stick that is in the instructions? Uh, no, the poking stick was it, to poke your holes through oh, okay. if you didn't have a knife. That was an ore, but I am actually going to use a poking stick now. Way hey, we're through. <laughs> Brilliant. So that took way too long, and I'm sorry. <laughs> 
So you just pull your ribbon through and then you get. Now this is a lovely way to do it if you're not going to put a, a cover, if you're not going to put like a spine on and you just want to put two covers, but it also provides a bit more structure to the, the spine. So it does help. There is a structural element to this as well. Um, but it looks really pretty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can just stick on front and back boards and you don't, you know, you can see the lovely binding you've done. Like you don't need to uh, cover that up if you don't want to. You can leave that exposed. Mm, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, it looks good. There is an art it is to beautiful. it. It is lovely. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's your call. And, you know, I'm not going to do that because traditional spell book, look, I want a kind of... Also, for the electronics I'm going to put in my book, I actually need, like, a spine so that I can run electronics yeah. into the book. okay. Like, there's a logistical uh, thing to, to what I'm doing here as well because I've got a plan for this book. So, yeah, and we're just going to do the long one. <sighs> What I like doing is having this third longer ribbon, then you can tie it around the book or use oh. to create a class. Because well, old books always have class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's how you know I've got always. an idea for my class. So I'm going to leave this long ribbon to have my class okay. going as well. And these will just, these will get um, stuck into the book boards, but that helps really structure the spine into the book boards. So it is worth, you know, if you're doing it, doesn't have to be pretty if you're doing that but yeah. it is a really it adds a bit of structure to your book so it can it can assist yeah. um so that's sort of all we're doing today but i'm just going to talk about what we're going to do next yeah. time so that you can prep your materials okay you will need at least two pieces of cardboard just a bit bigger than your paper they will be your book board a spine if you want to have a solid spine you will need like a piece of tubing you can have no spine or you can have a soft fabric or paper spine so you don't need a tube but if you want that kind of real structured book look tube um if you want someone asked on the twitter uh if their pages are really thin how do they bulk it out in that case you want more cards <laughs> You just want more layers. So you're basically going to create uh, more layers inside your book that like are hidden, but make the book seem thicker. Um, you will then want even more card for making decorations or foam if you've got it or other things. So I've collected a whole assortment of, of I'm trying to see if I can see any of my assortment now. Um, so I've got a whole box of crystals and things. So I've got this little quartz crystal that um, this foam will be painted. But it's also going to have a light behind oh, it, damn, so the fancy. crystal crystal on the front will flash. That's real fancy. Yeah, that's where we're going. Sorry, I'm um, just like hiding down here. <laughs> um, but the big thing is going to be covering your book cover. Now you could, you can do this with paper, but ideally, you fabric. Fabric is going to be your best bet. So I'm going to cover my book in this silk. That is just an off cut that I have left over, which needs ironing before uh, yeah. it goes on a well, book cover. You, if you want a weathered look, that looks, you know, like a battered, weathered book of skin. It, it, yeah. Um, so just people asking about the spine, the piping back, uh, as Macamini has called it, would toilet paper rolls work for the piping back? It needs to be the length of your card uh, book board. So... If you've got a couple of toilet roll tubes and you can find a way to nicely stick them together, sure. Like, and actually, if you've got those ridges in your spine, that's quite bookish. So actually joining them together might work really well. Um, but yeah, fabric is going to be the best because what you need to do, I love that my card inside is so yellow, is we'll end up sticking these to the fabric and then leaving a little gap. And that will mean that it can fold really smoothly um, without like, you know, any issues. So fabric is best, paper will work. Like if you've got pretty like uh, wrapping paper or something that will work. Um, uh, washi tape could join those and make it really nice. Uh, you could just paint your card. Like you could join it with paint and with uh, join them with tape and then paint your card but yeah I'm gonna go with fabric and I'm also gonna design some embellishments for my book so you've got a week people design your book 
Um, uh, Keith Shimakaze in chat says, would human skin work? I have um project. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just no. source it ethically. <laughs> okay, just ethically source it, right? Like, we do not condone anything, nor do we condemn anything. Just make sure it's organic. <laughs> No free range sides. free range <laughs> um so yeah like i've got so i've got some scraps of other fabric um that i'm going to be using to create like corners and edges and details and things so just raid your house for stuff that could decorate a pretty book um and come with stuff and yeah you will need glue it does need to be it can't be a, or it could be a glue gun but better for this case will be like a spreadable glue um i've actually found one of one of the best glues for gluing uh fabric to things and i hate this because it's the worst glue is copy decks otherwise known as fish glue uh, and it it's the most fish? horrible stuff is it made I don't know if it is actually made from fish. I think it's made from boiled bones the way that glue used to be. Mm. Um, but it smells like fish and it is the most hideous stuff, but it glues fabric incredibly well. Um, now I've got contact cement. I guess I'm using contact cement. This, um, TVA, like, you know, that kind of glue would work, but it will take a lot longer drying. So you will need to be like, you'll need to kind of judge it. Um, and PVA is a very wet glue, so if you use too much and push it through your fabric, like it will come through your fabric. Um, but yeah, that's everything you need. That is a look at that. That is a bound book. That looks really good, really, really good. And that, like after, oh, damn what it. is that? What is that? That is, a thread, that is a thread that got caught that should not be there. So I will have to tie a knot in that and like cut it. So I'll have to tie yeah. a knot there. Okay. Um, happy little accident. Happy little accident. Like, accidents are okay. We work through accidents. That's just where it got caught. Like, you know, because I probably wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll deal with Makes that later. Makes it more authentic. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, it will also mean that things slip and move because the binding is not tight. But yeah, that took half an hour, basically, to create that. Yeah. So it looks yeah. amazing already. Like it definitely like mm. Vaxel says this would be great for taking notes in D and D. Well, there's something you can make then. Impress impress yep. D and D group. Turn up with your spell book and just be like, whoop! There it is. Turn up with the spell book, and if you know if you want to turn up with a potion bottle as well, glowing potion bottles are coming on to come into the Patreon next week. Um, yeah. But yeah, for now, I'm gonna do the thing. B bye bye. We need bye. this card here, and then I need to mute.